Mitch McConnell, did you play that Mitch McConnell thing on Friday where he said he was going to blow through this? I think it. Yeah, we no, should we get that. Yeah, we should play that. We All right. That. Just trying to figure out where we start with this because it's a, a there's a lot of information. Here is Mitch McConnell. He said this when when did he say this? He said this on the twenty first. Okay, so Mitch McConnell says this on the twenty first. This is on that that's Friday, right? Okay. And for at least a couple of weeks, maybe I guess a week, um, Republican, a senior Republican aides learned of the claims made by a uh, woman, Debbie Ramirez. So this was at the least at the beginning of last week as Republicans are desperately trying to speed up the Kavanaugh nomination vote. Mitch McConnell must have known by Friday that this story in The New Yorker was about to break. And here he is at the Christian Healthcare Ministries conference speaking to them uh talking about brett kavanaugh who's been um accused of some fairly non-christian behavior you've watched the fight you've watched the tactics but here's what i want to tell you in the very near future Judge Kavanaugh will be on the United States Supreme Court. So my friends, keep the faith. Don't get rattled by all of this. We're going to plow right through it and do our job. That's right. Nice choice of words there. Yeah, Indeed. Jesus. The str their struggle is going to be for naught. We're just going to do or it. Right. Now remember, ostensibly, the uh, Republicans want to get to the truth of this matter which apparently was preordained um, before Mitch McConnell got up there. Mitch McConnell also knew at that moment that there was a second um, accusation of sexual misconduct that was about to break. Now, there's multiple theories here. Mitch McConnell never liked uh, Brett Kavanaugh as a pick, sort of knew that there was a lot of uh, problems with Brett Kavanaugh. I've said it before, it might have been just a massive coincidence that there was all of these female-oriented commercials saying what a great guy Brett Kavanaugh was and about how they, um, you know, they made him a, a soccer dad or coached a, an all-girls basketball team. And he could remember all of their names. He could remember all of their They were all distinct human individuals to them in a certain sense. He's so obsessed with teenage girls. How could he possibly be a creep? Indeed. And he um, was great in a carpool, which is really helpful. He's actually like doing the traditional mom roles, right? And so maybe it was a huge coincidence. Maybe it was that they wanted to show that he wouldn't repeal Roe v. Wade which seems a little bit dubious to me. Like, why didn't they roll this stuff out with Gorsuch? No. Why, did, why was there no... Surely Neil Gorsuch has one female friend who could get up there and say he's a really good guy. Actually, I think we've just exposed the weakest well, hole in our argument right there. It's possible he has none, but surely they could have found someone who could pretend for that moment. But they were really concerned about this. Mitch McConnell is also concerned about the enormous amount of documents uh, that Kavanaugh was involved with in the uh, Bush administration. So Mitch McConnell, never a fan of Kavanaugh's, knows that there's a whole host of folks like Brett Kavanaugh, just as um, reactionary, some instances maybe worse. Some instances may be better from the perspective of uh, normal people. But nevertheless, um, 
maybe maybe Mitch McConnell, who felt that his keeping Merrick Garland off the Supreme Court with an open Supreme Court seat when Donald Trump ran was the reason why Donald Trump won. We don't talk about that much, but there's a lot of data that suggests those same people that Mitch McConnell was talking to, the Christian base, came out because there was an open seat on the Supreme Court. And we read the other day that story about how Republican voters don't see any stakes in this. The Democrats supposedly are afraid that an open seat will generate more interest on the Republican side. Supposedly, the, the Republicans are afraid that it's going to demoralize their base. So if I'm Mitch McConnell and I know we're going to cut Brett Kavanaugh loose, I'm going to get up there and I'm going to make it sound like I am putting 110% on the field. But what can you do? The feminazis won. I don't know. That's just a theory as to what's going on here. I don't, I don't pretend to think that any of these players think that they have control over this process. I think they put stuff out there and they hope um, you know, that things go according to um, a certain trajectory, but you never know. Certainly, nobody knew what Ed Whelan was up to. And we will get to that story in a moment. Well, let's, let's go to Ed Whelan. So on that same Thursday afternoon, I think it was, or Friday, it must have been Friday, right? Ed Whelan, who is a, um, a friend of Kavanaugh's. Did you guys talk about this on Friday? I think we touched on it. We didn't touched we? on it. We headlined it at least. Okay. So Ed Whelan is a, a conservative lawyer and commentator. Aren't they all? And do we have that first tweet about Charlie Kirk? Oh, yeah. Let's start with this. This is all interrelated, folks. No, not from Charlie Kirk, but about him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, this tweet, this right, right, that one right there. Okay, so this comes up. This guy, um, Jack Goldsmith, who is a, um, I think he's a, uh, you know, one of the guys who, who, who may have been formerly in the DOJ. And uh, he's a legal commentator and a professor, I believe. The conservative legal movement, he writes, led by the Federal Society, has had extraordinary successes producing A-plus judicial candidates and fostering conservative legal ideas. Its seriousness and achievements contrast sharply with the rest of what passes for conservatism in the U.S. Now, I think that's a dubious claim, frankly, but certainly in terms of their efficacy, all we've done is talk about Federalist Society people in the DOJ um, and uh, everybody who's ever going to get nominated for the Supreme Court on the right is from the Federalist Society. And some other guy uh, responds, I don't know who he is. One reason for this is that the law, and particularly appellate constitutional law, does not allow space for frauds. The judicial conservative movement isn't open to penetration by grifters and idiot populists because the barriers to entry are too high. No Charlie Kirks here. And... There's two ways that it's pro a problem. One, here's Charlie Kirk weighing in on the Kavanaugh defense a day later that breaking. Kavanaugh says he has calendars from 1982 that exonerate him and show his accuser's story doesn't match up at all. Now, the Kavanaugh people have since admitted, well, just because I didn't put going to uh, try and rape a woman tonight at a party. Underage drinking party. Yeah, underage drinking party where uh, hopefully I will be able to cover a woman's mouth while she tries to scream. A girl's uh, mouth while she tries to scream. No, stop. Um, they said that doesn't prove anything. But it's just he does put stuff in his calendar. 
uh, that his accuser's story doesn't match up at all. I am so impressed that he has 35-year-old high school calendars. This is definitely the type of guy we need on the Supreme Court. <laughs> he knew he was going to need an alibi 35 years later. I mean, very possibly. I, I don't think it's improbable that uh, a kid like that would do that um, and, and, and keep the calendars. I mean, if I had a calendar that I was not, if I, that I kept, I, I may have one from college. Um, it's not inconceivable. I've got a box full of like my colorings from second grade in my closet at home. Boom! There you go. So that's evidence. Of and d- <laughs> and does any of them de- does any of them depict you trying to sexually assault any type of woman? Uh, no comment. Well, <laughs> because if they didn't, then you'd be in the clear. So, getting back to the idea of the conservative legal movement not promoting grifters or liars or frauds. Here is a tweet by Ed Whalen. He, like I say, conservative lawyer and commentator, president of an ethics and public policy Washington think tank, the Ethics and Public Policy Center. And... This guy, Ed Whelan, went on and he was teasing it for days. He was tweezing, tweeting it for days. But before he did, this guy, Matt Whitlock, who is the communications director for Senator Orrin Hatch, deputy chief of staff for Orrin Hatch, had this to say about Ed Whelan. Ed Whelan had tweeted, I think it was on Thursday, or Wednesday, a horrific incident similar to the one the accuser alleges may well have occurred. But if so, she's got the wrong guy. Kavanaugh wasn't present. As this and much more will confirm. And Matt Whitlock, the guy who works for Grassley, I mean, Orrin Hatch on the, on the um, Senate uh, Judiciary Committee, says keep an eye on Ed's tweets the next few days. Now, why would you say that unless you thought Ed was going to present something blockbuster the next few days? And he did. Meanwhile, understand, too, that there was a story, uh, the Washington Post, Kavanaugh and his allies have been privately discussing a defense that would not question whether the incident happened to Ford, but instead would raise doubts that the attacker was Kavanaugh. This is according to a person familiar with the discussions. Kathleen Parker comes out with a uh, a op-ed piece earlier in the week. Maybe there was someone who looked like Kavanaugh, and she doesn't know who it is. I mean, we started to see this everywhere. Nobody took it seriously. But why would all of these people have this same idea? That maybe this 15-year-old didn't know. Now, they supposedly don't have any facts about it, right? So Ed Whelan comes out with a huge tweet thread that lays out the look of, of the house that lays out the look of the house in Maryland that shows pictures of a guy who lived in a house, who had a party, who was in that circle of friends. And those pictures, they looked almost eerily similar to people who didn't know either one of these guys. (laughs) They both look like white, waspy guys. Exactly. And... If you look at their pictures today, like they look somewhat similar. But, and he was so sure of this. I mean, he goes on and on. He said early on, by one week today, I expect Judge Kavanaugh will have been clearly vindicated on this matter. Compelling evidence will show his categorical uh, categorical denial to be true. Senator Feinstein will be apologizing to Judge Kavanaugh. And do you have the tweet thread? Um, So he puts out this tweet thread, which, of course, has now been since deleted. 
and not only floats the idea that there is a doppelganger out there, but names him. I'm not going to say the guy's name, but names him. Coincidentally, this is one of the guys who signed a character witness for Brett Kavanaugh. But this guy is now like a middle school teacher somewhere who's just been named as the attempted rapist of Dr. Blasey Ford back when she was a 15-year-old. And, and people are stunned because this guy's a lawyer and the president of the Ethics and Public Policy Center, one would think that he would know better than to name a private citizen as an attempted rapist. Well, These people are idiots. And then the world. within moments, we had... Dr. Ford, uh, Dr. Blasey Ford um, put out a statement. I knew both of these people pretty well. Uh, and I could definitely tell the, them apart. I know exactly who it was. It was Brett Kavanaugh. And um, this other person I'm, I was friends with. <laughs> I've this got other one in between who you've ran. Right, here's, yeah, here's one of them. The national Kavanaugh's my home was 3.6 miles away. Smith's 4.3 judges, 10 miles and the female classmates, seven miles. Like, I mean, this is, this is Deep like the science. Thinking. Yes. I mean, it's just bizarre. And then everyone around Whelan pretends they had no idea what he was up to. They all say, Oh, he kept us all in the dark, which means uh, one of two things. A, they're lying, which I think is arguable. We should probably have an investigation into that because if Judge Kavanaugh had any part in trying to accuse a second person, that would show a little bit less than what we want out of a judicial temperament. Don't you see Chuck Grassley? He's like, is there some other guy that looked like you or something? <laughs> I mean, most of them, right? Can we just, there uh, must have been some other guy, you're not that distinctive looking, can't we just get it out that way? I thought Cory Booker was my magical Negro friend. Fox and Friends, of course, got right on the ball with this one. Here it is. Uh, here's Fox and Friends, and they may have broken the case. It's early in the morning, so we got to get this out there. Here it is. This is Fox and Friends. This must have been on Friday morning. There was one other factor, and Ed, I'm sure uh, being down in Washington yesterday, you saw the fact that uh, a fellow by the name of Ed Whelan, who had been yeah. one of the clerks for Antonin Scalia and a supporter of Judge Kavanaugh, he looked at what uh, Christine Ford told the Washington Post and figured out, okay, these now, people... Now, pause it for one second. There were actually, apparently, Whelan was out asking friends of Blasey Ford before the Washington po before she came out and outed herself. So somehow he had some foreknowledge of what was going on, of who she was. But continue. Ed Whelan, who had been yeah. one of the clerks for Antonin Scalia and a supporter of Judge Kavanaugh, he looked at what uh, Christine Ford told the Washington Post and figured out, okay, these people were named, these four people, where did they live? And looked at what she had said and figured out what house it may have ha happened at because it was the house closest to the golf course. Yeah. And then realized whose house it was and looked at a picture of the young man who lived there at the time, who was a classmate of Mr. Kavanaugh's, put up side-by-side -side images. They look a lot alike. So, really? Is it a case of mistaken identity? Exactly. Now, Dr. Ford put out a statement last night insisting she knows the difference between Judge Kavanaugh Zero and this other chance. person, and there's no chance, so we'll see. Right, so we'll see. So we'll see. A lot of identities. 
they still, even then, they were still trying to float it, right? Even after it had been completely shot down and everybody had basically run away from Ed Whelan faster than I've seen anybody run away from anybody ever. And so uh, Ed Whelan has now taken a leave of absence from his ethics group after uh, offering to resign. And they basically said, well, we'll take a month and then we'll revisit because in a month, Nobody's going to care that Ed Whelan is back there in the non-grifter world. Let's just bring that last tweet. Oh, you just got rid of, rid of it. In the non-grifter world of conservative legal thought. Right? Here it is. Let me just read that again. One key reason for this is the law, particularly appellate constitutional law, does not allow for space for frauds. The judicial conservative movement, this is a former uh, Scalia, right, uh, Clerk? Isn't open to penetration by yeah. grifters and idiot populace because of the barriers to entry are too high. Idiot. No Charlie Kirks here, right. That barrier to entry seems to have maybe dropped a little bit more than this guy was aware of. Thinking Ed Whelan, Serious and questions, like etch-a-sketch an analyst. Meanwhile, we should also just add... I don't even know if I have this story, but I um, there was a uh, a guy hired to round out the communications team for Chuck Grassley on the Senate Judiciary Committee, and um, <laughs> turns out that he was uh, he was available to them because at his last job. He was accused of sexual harassment, and uh, <laughs> they hired him specifically to marshal the Kavanaugh nomination through the Senate Judiciary Committee. Well, he's got experience in such things. I mean, exactly. that actually, like, oh, no, I'm super good at dealing with sexual <laughs> harassment charges. Okay, fair enough. We're on the same page. <laughs> 